بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونحمده ونصلي ونسلم على النبي الكريم وبعد. Honorable brothers and sisters, I've already mentioned uh, the migration of Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, from Babylon to Palestine. If you haven't listened to it, then it's on our, uh, our Masjid YouTube channel, Kanhul Masjid YouTube channel, inshallah ta'ala. Then I spoke about Sayyidina Yaqub السلام, who was called Israel, and his children, known as Banu Israel. They migrated from Palestine to Egypt. And then I spoke about how they were enslaved by pharaohs. They were living in, in, in Egypt very happy at the time of Yusuf at the time of Yaqub But after the demise of Yaqub and his son Yusuf, they were enslaved by pharaohs one after another and they suffered for approximately 400 years in Egypt. Then I said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them, helped them and assisted them, assisted them and by sending Sayyidina Musa Sayyidina Musa Alhamdulillah took them out from the bondage away from Pharaoh and they crossed the miraculous uh, crossing of the Red Sea that happened and a, a mu'ajaza, a living miracle which is something that they witnessed. The sea is still there but if you try to cross, nobody, no, the water is not going to be parted anymore. The way the water parted for Sayyidina Musa and Banu Israel. Today I'm talking about what happened after they crossed. This is, so this is our third segment now, inshallah ta'ala. If you follow from all of them, then inshallah ta'ala, you'll have a clear idea of Banu Israel. Ya Bani Israel is mentioned so many times in the Quran. We don't understand, you know, when Allah said that, Ya Bani Israel, udhkuru ni'mati. Allah said that, remember all the blessings that I've given you. What are the blessings you've seen? One after another, they witnessed so many miracles. So now they are you know, across the Red Sea now. They're in the other side. As on the, and mashallah, now everybody's happy, you know, like they're all celebrating because they witness with their own eyes, Pharaoh is dead. And they remember Musa Islam when, when he told them, a time will come, Asa Rabbukum, Ayyuhlika Adu Wakum. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, destroy your enemy. They will now witness with their own eyes. The enemy is destroyed now. Now they're living in this beautiful area now on the other side. There is no Pharaoh, there is no Haman, there is no Qarun, there is no police. There are no guards of, uh, of Pharaoh. Freedom, everybody. They are saying freedom to one another. Alhamdulillah. You know, we thank Allah that we are now free. We're not going to be punished. Our children are not going to be killed. Our babies are not going to be tortured. Our men are going to be killed. Our women are going to be killed. And they were very happy. That's what everybody wants. For freedom, you'll do anything because that's what we want. You know, Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he found out that Amr ibn As radiallahu ta'ala anhu, you know, he, when he was the governor of Egypt, you know, he was uh, one, one of the men was put into prison and for something that he's, he hasn't done anything wrong, basically. Amr ibn As radiallahu ta'ala anhu, you know, uh, he put him into prison. He managed to escape from the prison and he came to Medina and he said, Umar, you know, I was put into prison by one of your men. Amr ibn As is a Sahabi of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said that I haven't done anything wrong, and he narrated his story. I just had a race, horse race between me and the son of Amr ibn As, and I beat him. And he said that how dare you? Do you know who I am? My father is the governor. How dare you beat me in the horse race? And he beat me up, and he beat me so much, and he injured me. So I complained to the father. He put me into prison. So Umar, you need to do something about it. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, long story anyway, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu wrote a letter to Amr ibn As that next Hajj I want to meet you in Medina. After you done Hajj, meet me in Medina. He meets him and then Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu penalized the father and the son. And then Umar ibn Khattab said something so beautiful. He said, Ya Amr, mata isti'abadtum al-nas wa qad waladatkum ummahatum ahrara. Umar, what is this? You enslaving people since when can you make people your slaves? When their own mothers have given them, when their own mothers given them birth, they were given them birth as free people. Everybody is free. You don't keep people in open prison. You don't shut up electricity and gas and medical supplies. And then you tell them that we give them freedom. That's not freedom. Let people worship whoever they want to worship. Live and let live. So the people were very happy that we are away from Pharaoh now. We are away from Pharaoh. We could, there's no punishment here. We could do whatever we want to do. But uh, Banu Israel, they, they just witnessed a miracle. Remember, they crossed the Red Sea. They came to the other side. They say to Musa, Musa, this desert is getting too hot for us. You know, 
They, should, they could do so, but Allah will help them. It's too hard for us. There's no houses here. There's no palaces that we had seen over there. There are no tents here. There are no shades here. Moses, you need to do something about it. Musa alayhi salam said, Ya Allah, these people are complaining. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them another favor. Allah, he commanded their cloud. Allah said, wherever Banu Israel they go, wherever they go, a cloud, you need to follow them. Subhanallah, the cloud was following. Can you imagine? The cloud gave them shade. You know, today we have to look for the cloud. You have to look for the shade. Here they don't. The cloud was following them. They go to the toilet. They go to relieve themselves. They go to eat somewhere. They go to take a nap. And the cloud was giving them shade. Second complaint, Moses. You see, if they wait, Allah will give it to them. But it's not, they keep on complaining. Moses, you got to do something. We are thirsty now. You know, the water that we had with us, all the water is finished. And there's no river here, there's no reservoir here, there's no fountains here, there's no springs here, there's no well here. We need water, we need water, we're going to die because of due to dehydration. Do something about it. Musa al Islam, he said, Oh Allah, Allah, we need water. Allah, give us water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Idhri bi asak al hajar. Musa was to carry a staff with him. Oh Musa, you know the staff that you have? Hit the rock. Musa al Islam, you know, he, uh, he hit the rock. Idhri bi asak al hajar. Yes, and when he struck the rock, from the rock, 12 springs gushed out. And everybody is now drinking water. Miracles after miracles after miracles. They witnessed it with their own eyes. Now they said, okay, we got the shade. We got the drinks. We need food now. Musa, where is the food? You know, you need to tell Allah to give us food, you know. What is the food? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, says, وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave food from the heaven, everybody. You don't have to cook, you don't have to prepare, you don't have to wash, you don't have to work. You know, it's just ready made for you. Manna was something very sweet. And salwa is like quails, birds, meat is ready, sweet dish is ready. And they used to get it every single day. Whenever they want, they go there and it's written, it's, it's there on the, on the leaves. And they just pick it up and everybody's eating it. Everybody have enough food and drink now, they're really enjoying it. Guess what? They complain again. He said, Musa, you know, this food, we are bored of this food, you know. We are sick and tired of the meat and we are sick and tired of this uh, sweet dish. We want some onions. We want some lentils. We want some vegetables. He said, what's wrong with you people? Allah's generosity, Allah's hospitality. Are you rejecting all of that? Whatever you're looking for, udkhulu misran fa inna lakum ma sa'altum. You'll find it everywhere. Enter into any, any town, you'll find it. But what Allah has given you, this is Allah's generosity and hospitality. You're rejecting it, you're denying it. But that's said, they keep on complaining one after another, one after another. Then what happened? As they were living in the desert for so many years, someone, you know what happens? When you live with so many people, quarrels and arguments take place. Someone kills someone. So they came to Musa alayhi salam. He said, Musa, we need help again. So what is it? He said, one of my colleagues, one of our colleagues, you know, he's been, he's, he's, been, he's been killed. Someone murdered him. He said, oh, who's the murderer? Said, we don't know. Musa, you're a prophet of Allah, so you will know. Musa alayhi salam said, oh Allah, Again, every single time they complain, he t Musa asked ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, we have another problem now. It's not food and drink or the shade or anything like that. Someone has been murdered. We need to know who the murderer is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Now, enough of this question. Now they have to make sacrifices. Oh Musa, you tell them they have to sacrifice a cow. So Musa alayhi salam said, Inna Allah ya'murukum an tathbahu baqara. Allah said, you will find the answer. Allah will tell you who the murderer is. But you have to now purchase a cow and sacrifice it. Bakara is an indefinite word in Arabic language. We call it nakira. It means any cow you slaughter, that job will be done. But guess what? Banu Israel is Banu Israel. <laughs> they said, uh, you tell Allah to define us the cow. What kind of cow is it? The size, the color, what does it do? You know, the, the, the way it walks, how does it take a nap? All these kind of questions. Musa Islam said, are you mocking the command of Allah? But anyway, every time they ask a question, Musa Islam, he asked Allah as well. You know, they made it difficult, Allah made it difficult for them. So they could have sacrificed any cow, but now Allah gave specific you know, uh, description because of the questioning. Basically, Allah is teaching us that don't make religion very difficult. Allah made it very easy. Don't ask unnecessary questions. So they ask and ask, right? Then Allah says, فَذَبَرُوهَا They did find that cow according to the description Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to Musa alayhi salam. وَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ But they were very close of not sacrificing the cow. Then the cow was sacrificed. Then Musa said, now take the meat of this cow and hit the dead body. So they hit the dead body. The man who was dead, he came alive again. Can you, can you imagine? Someone been dead for a month, he comes back alive again. 
and he speaks, he said, so and so has murdered me. And then he goes back to his place and he's buried again after that. So this is, they were witnessing so many miracles, one after another. But the thing is, they were making life very difficult for Musa alayhi salam. Unnecessary question. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, when he narrated this story to, the, uh, to his sahaba, he said, O oh people, ma amartukum bihi fa'tu minhu ma stata'tu. O my ummah, please don't be like Banu Israel. What, when I give you a command, just do it. The Prophet of Allah was preaching once and he said that Allah has command made hajj obligatory upon you. So one sahabi said, I have a question. He said, what is it? Is it every year? He said, did I say every year? I mean, I am the lawgiver. I am the sharia. I will explain to you. You don't need to ask me this question now. Let me finish, then you could ask the question. If I were to say yes every year, then mastata'atum. Then you can't do it anymore. So whatever, when Allah says hajj is fard, and he didn't say one year or two years, then leave it. That means hajj is fard once in a lifetime. Then the Prophet ﷺ says something very important. He said, whatever command I give you, do it much as you can. وَمَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَاجْتَنِبُوا And if I tell you to abstain from something, then abstain from it. Don't, don't do it. Very simple. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, أَهْلَكَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ because you know what? So many nations, they were destroyed who came before you. Kathratu su'alihim. Because of their so many unnecessary questions. Wa akhtilafuhum ala anbiya'ihim. Fa innam ahlaka man kana qablakum bi kathratu su'alihim. Wa akhtilafuhum ala anbiya'ihim. They were ruined and perished and destroyed because of their unnecessary question and because they always dispute with their prophets. That's the unnecessary question and always going against the prophets. He said, Prophet of Allah is teaching us that if I command you, do it. If I tell you to abstain from it, then abstain from it. مَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُهُ Whatever a Rasul gives you, take it. وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ If he prohibits something, فَاشْتَنِبُهُ Abstain from it. Anyway, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu salam, then he received a command of Allah. And he said, Musa, I want you to choose 70 of your men. First of all, I want you to fast for 30 days. Allah is preparing for wahi or revelation. Allah will speak to him now. And give him revelation, give him wahi and commandments. Fast for 30 days and then come to me with 70 men. Musa alayhi salam with the 70 is going where? Mount Sinai. What would you see in? He's going there. Musa alayhi salam, when he found out Allah wants to speak to him, remember to climb mountains is not easy. Musa alayhi salam left everybody behind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Musa alayhi salam, What happened? <laughs> you know, uh, Musa, uh, where are the rest of the people? He said, Allahum ulahi ala athari, they're behind me. So, yeah, but I told you to bring them. He said, وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّ لِتَرْضَى What a powerful phrase. It's my Lord, when I found out that you want to speak to me, I just hurried. I just hurried. I want to talk to my Lord. You know, I hurried. I want, to, I want your pleasure, oh my Lord. I want your pleasure. That's why. Anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then just spoke to Musa alayhi salam, gave him the revelation. You know, a long story. By the way, when Allah spoke to Musa alayhi salam, he said, my Lord, now I heard your speech. I want to see you. Rabbi Arini Anbur Ilayk. Allah, please show yourself to me. I want to see you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Musa, you know, the eyes that you have now, these eyes are not prepared to see me. In Jannah, the eyes will be changed, then you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Anyway, Musa alayhi salam was given the commandments. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the commandments. And then he came down. Those 70 men are still waiting, by the way. They haven't reached Musa alayhi salam. So he came down. Because what happened? He said, I spoke to Allah. And Allah has given these ten commandments. And this, you know, the, the tablets that I'm carrying, these are the commandments. These commandments will create unity. These com commandments will create harmony and peace and tranquility. Because if you don't follow the Sharia of Allah, then you're going to just follow your desire. And if you follow your desire, you'll be ruined. You need Allah's commandments. If you don't follow Allah's commandments, and if you don't follow the teaching of the prophets, then you are just like animals. So we have to follow Allah's commandments. So after I'm gone, you will get peace and tranquility. You know what the 70 people, they said? Uh, we don't believe that you spoke to God. Astaghfirullah. We don't believe that you spoke to God. Musa, we don't believe you until we see God face to face. <laughs> until we see God face to face. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, these people are not going to learn. فَأَخَذَتْكُمُ الصَّعِقَةُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْبُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a thunderbolts and thunderbolts came, killed all the 70 people. They were the best people by the way. They were the best people that Musa chose from all of them. Even they were like this. Imagine how the others are. 
Harun Wallace wasn't there by the way. Allah, Musa Sam left Harun with the people. It's getting too long, so I'll cut it very soon. Now. Then what happened was Musa he pleaded, Oh Allah, these are the, like these were my best ones. Allah, please. You could have destroyed them anyway. You know? These people made a mistake. Allah, please bring them back to life again. Subhanallah, they're all dead. Because of dua of Musa all these 70 people were given another life as well. Miracles after miracles after miracles. Musa Islam has performed and showed them so that the Iman becomes strong. You know, Musa Islam he struggled with them. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once, one Sahabi, he backbited him. By the way, there are so many people made mistakes. Allah has forgiven them. So, uh, uh, so uh, you know, another Sahabi complained, the Prophet Allah, there's another person backbiting about you. Rasulullah Sallam was very upset about this. And then he looked down and the color of his face changed. You know, the Prophet of Allah was a very handsome person. When he used to get angry, his face of his color, they say that he used to become so red. It's like someone has thrown the seeds of pomegranate on him, Rumman. Mm-hmm. An example, basically, Sahabi, Sahaba, they realized that the Prophet of Allah is very upset now. And the Sahabi who said it, he regretted it. He said, I wish I didn't complain to the Prophet of Allah. Never seen him so angry. Then the Prophet of Allah, he calmed down, relaxed, and he looked up and he said, Rahimallahu Akhi Musa. May Allah have mercy on my brother Moses, Prophet Musa. You know, he was hurt more and more from Banu Israel, but he done sabr. I will follow my brother's tradition and I will do sabr as well. So, you know, the Prophet of Allah remembered Musa. You could imagine what Musa al-Islam went through. So anyway, Alhamdulillah, Musa al-Islam, because of his dua, the Banu Israel, Alhamdulillah, the 70 came back. And then Musa al-Islam, together, he and introduce all the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Banu Israel. Did Banu Israel act upon all the commandments of Allah? Did they follow the admonition? All the admonition and all the nasiha that Allah has given? Inshallah, we'll talk about this in the next segment. If Allah give us the